favorite hour of the week, the political analysis with our regular analyst Ambrose Weda, advocate of the High Court, sits on the board of Lake Basin Development Authority, canon of the Anglican Church and soft skills expert. A high-powered team of CSAs led by Dr. Matiani of Interior and Mutahi Kagwe of Health met church leaders last week and this is part of what they said after that meeting. Very closely with faith-based organizations, especially our religious leaders. This is a challenge facing all of us and is a time when we have to work together. We will continue this trajectory of constant engagement as we move forward and as we confront these challenges. As a Christian community, we are committed to ensuring that we are there by the guidelines that the government puts in place. We are also going to give uh, proposals on what we think can be done, especially for the management of churches. Well, that was David Oginde of the Crisis the Answer Ministry, CITAM, speaking on behalf of church leaders after meeting with government of Kenya officials. There has been an argument whether that churches should be open because they are in a position to enforce health guidelines, such as social distancing, among their members. Are you persuaded by that argument? It is not about argument. Our King of Kings, Jehovah, King of Kings, yes. has always told us, seek wisdom. It is the principal thing. In all you are seeking, get understanding. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 4 verse 7. Yes. The question is what is wise in the circumstances? Mm -hmm. Not what is emotional. God has not told her to seek prayer. He said seek wisdom. It is the principal thing. Understanding. Mm -hmm. And he said we will never perish, perish or be finished or yeah. suffer for any other reason apart from ignorance. Hosea 4, 6, my people perish for lack of knowledge yes. because they have rejected knowledge. The question is the times and the circumstances where we are. Mm -hmm. What is the wisdom? What does wisdom dictate? Does it dictate we gather together and mm -hmm. say, who has the final say? <laughs> Jehovah has the final say. Jehovah says there are things I've left for you. There are things you leave for me, but there are things have already settled. <laughs> you understand? I've mm -hmm. already settled that you breathe oxygen. If you refuse, I'm not in it. <laughs> you will die. Ah, you'll die. I've already settled that gravity <laughs> keeps you on the ground. <laughs> if you go on top of KICC and you decide to jump, Jehovah says it doesn't matter your fast or prayer, out. So what does the wisdom dictate? It is good for the churches to open. If wisdom dictates mm -hmm. wisdom of the circumstances mm -hmm. when the covid started in december up to now we have generated a body of wisdom mm -hmm. by god's grace a lot of knowledge understanding wisdom has been accumulated what does it dictate so the churches mm -hmm. should also not be emotional any wisdom any, any prayer without wisdom is death itself. The health officials are still facing rising numbers of infections and some reckless behavior. There are also seven cases now in the CIA. And the CIA story is a sad one because the departure point of that case is actually in Kibera. Somebody in Kibera, without the authority to authorize anybody to travel, signed a document that allowed and was respected by police all the way from Kibera taking mourners for a funeral in Siaya. Mourners themselves were positive and therefore were identified by our teams. What have you been insisting that the old way of doing things must change, particularly the elaborate funerals that are a culture in Western Kenya and Nyanza, but clearly that is easier said than done. Do you know that a lot of poor people mm -hmm. have been poor because of a choice? They are told this is the right thing, they do the wrong thing. Yes. People have died because of choices, mm -hmm. not because they are unfortunate, just choices. The COVID is here, mm -hmm. but you'll see some people believe that it is just some basic ordinary homer, which will <laughs> glow. You have heard it. From it, yes. You know wisdom and university degrees and professorship, they don't go together. Mm -hmm. You will see some, 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 some very highly educated people who do very idiotic things. <laughs> and you'll see some children five-year-old yeah. doing some very wise things. That's a, that's a demonstration of wisdom. So when we are talking about COVID mm -hmm. and we are talking about funerals, people are, tend to be overcarried by emotions. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I want to give a decent burial. Yeah. And our sense of decent burial is elaborateness. <laughs> Same people, if you ask them, I'm unwell, I just need uh, <laughs> that, that Trump drug is called what? <laughs> Chloroquine, something. Yeah. I, I need 200. Send me. They will not send you. <laughs> but immediately you are called home. They say, oh, where must, where the must be given this burial? He needs a suit from Birioni suit. He can't be buried with that Birioni suit. And all these things. So, what we are seeing, unfortunately, the King of Kings calls it foolishness. Mm -hmm. We must change. Times have changed. Things have changed. You try to go through the old way, change will crush you. Uh -huh. uh, kabisa, kabisa. If somebody dies, I've lost some relatives, very close. The other day I lost an uncle. I couldn't go. My, yes, uh, my good friend, uh, Honorable Peter Kilo died. I couldn't go. Mm -hmm. I looked at, why should I then go and pretend and get uh, permission, all these things. You get a letter. You get a letter. I will go after things are opened and I will go and condole with the family because we have been in the Anglican Church together for many, many years. And he's a great man. Mm -hmm. So why would some people insist they want to go and moon in here and you are carrying all these things? Why not just stay here? So unless people agree to change, mm -hmm. they will continue to suffer. We, because of this obstinacy, the Poverty gaps mm -hmm. are widening. The middle class has become more wise. They are more prayerful. These days when you go to church, <laughs> when the judges, before the judges were closed, they are full of the middle class. <laughs> the middle class are the ones who go for school, uh, whatever school days. <laughs> the ones they are full. They are there with their food and the whole family. If you go to a school like Alliance when children are being admitted, Ne, the children of Wadosi. Yes. And they have done well. There's nothing you can do about it. Mm. They are the ones who invest in books because they have realized <laughs> discipline. They have realized that it's about choices. Mm. Our people who want to continue in the old ways, yes. death awaits you. Just a disturbing trend of individuals who provide wrong contacts and telephone numbers during testing. Once the results are out, such individuals then become unavailable. This is serious, considering that some of them have tested positive and need to be contained. If we are unable to trace them, then we have weakened our effort at containment. Some Kenyans have become crafty and they give us false information in terms of their mobile numbers. So we test, the test times are positive, but when you call, then it's a different person. Then that makes it very, very difficult for us. I want to assure Kenyans once again that the diagnosis of COVID is not a death sentence. Whether Acting Director General of Health, Dr. Mott, says COVID infection is not a death sentence, but when Kenyans think of being admitted into isolation centers where you only see people in protective clothing, <coughs> then it raises real fears about testing positive for the virus. You started with it as a punishment, you'll pay for yourself for thousand shillings per day, you immediately after the test you're like arrested and taken away. You know the way we, we act demonic, even in good things. Now you hear those leaders complaining Kenyans are giving us bad whatever, whatever, whatever. Didn't we do what is called Uduma Namba? Was it to eat money? Mm -hmm. Or it was politics? Or what was it? We provided our details. Yes. Photos. Um, fingerprints, mm -hmm. IDs, telephone numbers, all these things. Why can't we use those things when we are testing people? It's a database. I put my fingerprint. If we can do use it for elections, why would we come here complaining about the, the figures, are the, the numbers are the same. In America, you only have one social number. That's what we need to implement here. So that when you go, you say, where's your ID? See, so you produce it. Mm -hmm. See, so that ID is there. And then you have telephone number, it is tested. All these things. Then when you talk to this, um, the mobile phone service providers, they can't tell. They will tell you that this is a weather, this is weather's number, but he has given it to his cousin <laughs> to say that, uh, 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 hello, this is Julie and Jacob. But when I gave us the number, <laughs> they, they can tell that you are saying Julie and Jacob. But, but you are saying it in Kisumundo. <laughs> so, like, if government is raising their hands and complaining like that, what do they expect us to do? To pray. The judges are closed. They should use the Odoma number, the Odoma uh, whatever, the, uh, the Odoma details. They should use the service providers, uh, 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 mobile service providers. Yes. We put all these things. The Electoral Commission data. So that when the testing is there, 
you first of all pass through screening who is being tested. This is weather. It is not asking, uh, uh, who, are, who are you being tested? <laughs> then you say, me, a cheng, uh, taro. <laughs> no, the, the, the government should not do that. In fact, uh, Dr. Bath, please don't come on telly and tell us something like that. It makes us sad. It shows incompetence. Mm. And uh, Matiangi, we should not allow these people to spoil his name like that. But we are also coming to terms with uh, many unintended consequences of the long school closure due to the COVID-19 pandemic like early marriages, FGM and even teenage pregnancies. <laughs> And that's Rift Valley Regional Commissioner George Natembea warning his chiefs that they will take responsibility for any pregnancies among school girls. But really, should it not be the responsibility of parents to be vigilant during this period when the children have been home for almost three months to ensure they don't go astray? I don't think we use our schools to avoid pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let's get some of these things clear. And I don't think the chiefs have a way of checking who is getting <laughs> pregnant where, unless they are sharing the same room. I, when, when a senior a senior government official also talks to other junior mm -hmm. government officials like that, you know there's something wrong. Somebody's sick. These are policy interventions where you say, we have our children at home now. The chiefs would like you to know the number of children at home who they are and then you monitor to them. We need to have a record. Mm -hmm. should, they re should they report back? Should you have a whole list in your sub-location, the school going children, where they are, who they are, and, and then we monitor. So that if one is missing mm -hmm. or in one is married, then you are able to tell us. But to tell you, did you will take responsibility <laughs> if somebody... That, 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 that's uh, very condescending and very wrong. But it is not the role of schools to keep girls and boys from getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. Schools are to educate, to grow them. We have a responsibility when they're in school to be taught, to be trained. They are not hiding places for children. We hide our children. <laughs> At home, I know there are uh, circumstances also that make it difficult. Mm -hmm. A modern child today, age the 10, mm -hmm. is a very brilliant child. They know everything. There's yes. nothing they don't know. Mm -hmm. And what grows people is training. You tell them, mm -hmm. you teach them, you show them, and then you provide a, uh, an, an environment through which they can thrive. I don't think a girl of 12 years will go and get married unless the parents are, 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 are involved, uh -huh. unless the, the, everybody knows. So that is not a problem. The problem is getting pregnant. People get pregnant even with their own age Even the parents cannot know. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you intervene? You teach the parents that where we are now, you must keep your eyes on the girls. Uh -huh. Here in Nairobi, here in the city, mm -hmm. even girls who are 20-something are not married. We are keeping our eyes. <laughs> Please. So, if you are married 12, you keep your eyes. You, you keep your eyes. The chief keeps his eyes. The neighbors are keeping their eyes. That, that is the solution. These are the threats that they are issue. It doesn't work. From a technical perspective, has been the face and voice of the fight against COVID-19, then it has to be the Acting Director General of Health, Dr. Patrick Amoth, and his efforts have been rewarded by being elected to the World Health Organization Executive Board as Vice President. I take this opportunity. To also share with you and <laughs> congratulate our Acting Director General Amoth, who this past week was elected Vice President of the World Health Organization Executive Board. This is quite a prestigious uh, appointment mm -hmm. and a major accomplishment to one of our own. And it shows the confidence with which we are being recognized internationally and in the group. That's Health CAS Dr. Rashid Aman congratulating Dr. Amoth on his election as Vice President of the World Health Organization Executive Board. That's an example of public, uh, a public official excelling at his job. When so many others are mad that is, corruption. That, that, that is uh, an example of excellence. Yes. Uh, ability to be good, mm -hmm. to excel in whatever little you do for the sake of humanity. And usually, mm -hmm. Kenyans have a tendency that you are more recognized internationally than locally. Yes. Uh, one of my mentors is called Professor Ondari mm -hmm. Through her writing, through her teaching, through her quotes, through her actions, through her life. Just imagine how we treated her here. Mm -hmm. 
Just imagine the way we treated her uh, around here. She could not even qualify to be a cabinet minister. Could only be some small assistant and, 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 and some. To us, she was even a fake uh, uh, Nobel laureate. Now we are celebrating Obate <laughs> because the other international community have recognized here yeah, he's still acting. We are still hoping my cousin, if that force becomes vacant, I'll push my cousin. You, you, you see this thing? So, uh, we will not celebrate here, but the day you are taken by VOA. Duly VOA. Let us stop this hypocrisy. Good people in this country, let's use them. Let's use them. Let's not pay more attention to charlatans making noise in the Senate. Let's not be focused more when it comes to removing or putting people in positions in Senate with, uh, instead of identifying talents that can grow us. So I congratulate Dr. Bath mm. and uh, Dr. Moth. Uh, Dr. Moth. Mm. And uh, the sooner it's released to go and do serious business, the more here we can choose our cousins <laughs> who mess us around as we say is from our own tribe. That is okay. On Friday, people were glued to the special Senate debate on a motion to remove Deputy Speaker Professor Kindiki Kidure. Mr. Speaker, Professor Kindiki Kidure, I have followed him in many aspects of his life. He went to Lenana School and I went there after him. He went to Moi University, I went there after him. He came to the Senate and I came to the Senate after him. Today his head is on the chopping block. I hope that I will not follow him there. Most of you cannot look at yourselves in the mirror, and that is why you do not want to have any reasons as you remove this very competent man. You just are carrying brief, and that's okay. I bow in shame to note that we are here today for such an elitist triviality, powered by petty, divisive, and vindictive politics. All I have to say to my good friend, Professor, is that we loved you, but Jubilee Party loved you more. I support... These motion. As Senator Malala said, we loved you, but Jubilee loved you more. Virtually all members praised Professor Kindiki's abilities, but in the end, politics prevailed and they voted him out with 54 out of 67 voter, uh, senators voting for the motion. It wasn't a surprise. The only sad part I feel, I mm -hmm. feel very sad, is the ruthlessness of my president. That ruthlessness is very, very sad. One of those people who stood by him at his critical moments was Professor Kibiki. They went to the Hague, they were together, and he was steadfast. And he has not displayed anything that you can say is done bad. He's supposed to the president, he's been disloyal. What they say is that a meeting was called in State House, which he didn't attend. I heard Senator Irungu Kangata saying, Oh, he reached out for him. All I can say, if that Kindiki can suffer that fear, mm -hmm. Even my brother Irungu can add out all these things. Please know that what goes round comes round. And unfortunately why I feel sad like this is it sets, it plants a seed. And that seed grows. And it can plant a seed of revenge. We are very lucky that when uh, President, the first President Jomo Kenyatta passed on, we came in. And he never came in. There was no seed of revenge. So the first family remained safe, remained well done until Mui left. When he left, President Kibaki came in. Again, there was no seed of revenge. Then President Kibaki came, uh, left and Honorable Mumu came. There is no revenge. President Kibaki is resting quietly and nicely. But some of these things that are being planted now, our children may have to pay the price. And it will be very sad. I feel, I, I, was, my, my, I was shocked if my own president can turn against his own close friend, people who stood by him, who is safe. He can, he, can, he, can, he can deal with anybody, ruthless, and that is sad. And I prayed for him, and I continue praying for the president. Your Excellency, stop this game for the sake of your grandchildren. A good man invests for his grandchildren. That's what God says. Change number one. Revolution Committee we shall replace Senator K. I'm sorry, I got the wrong clip there, but I was talking about how some of the sen uh, senators 
who themselves are facing the same disciplinary action from the Jubilee Party for missing the president's meeting, voted Kindiki out. These people don't count around them. Mm -hmm. Never, never, never. For you to stand up, there must have been a history of standing up. And the few people you can count to stand up are people like Senator Rengo. Mm -hmm. Now you can see because of life, he is now also in a position where if Raela says jump, he asks him how high. Mm -hmm. But historically you can see as a person who could stand up. If you look at even the governors, I know they are only, the ones I know close. The only governor who can stand up is Governor Kibwana. He is the one who can, and, and also Governor Nyong. Mm -hmm. can stand up. The reason is not because they are so courageous. It is because they are not attached to their positions. Mm -hmm. They don't mind going back <clears throat> to the being nobodies. Now some of these senators, they went to the Senate mm -hmm. riding on Tukutu. <laughs> then suddenly you are given a four-wheel drive, what, five million, twenty million shilling and you are earning money and you just <laughs> sign a signature and money comes. If somebody threatens that, <laughs> you can't just imagine going back to Ongoro in Lula. <laughs> so you can't count on them. You can't count on them when <laughs> counting is required. <laughs> because they, they don't mind losing their seats. But very few senators will say, okay, if this is what is cost my seat, I'll go back home. Because they have improved, <laughs> upgraded and improved their appetites. They eat with a big spoon. They eat caviar. <laughs> so when you now want to downgrade them to 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 Osuga and Mito and the like, they 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 never die. So counting on them, I had their debates. I thought some of them, even if you 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 loved with Kindiki like that, I would abstain. I would say, I love you so much. Uh, let me just keep quiet. If you go, you go. If you remain, you remain. Some of the deputy president's allies voted to remove deputy speaker and now attention is on the replacement and on the names being mentioned are uh, being Professor Margaret Kamaru of Wasingishu to appease the Rift Valley Block. Others are your colleagues in the legal profession, Stuart Mazayo of Kilifi and Mutula Kilozo Jr. of Makweni. In your opinion, who stands the best chance? To do what? To take Kindiki's position. <laughs> I really don't know. This is not about chance. Uh, just ask yourself, who does President Uru Kenyatta love most? That's the person who has the best chance. These other things, credentials. It's not about credentials. If it was credentials, maybe uh, it would have not been Kenyatta. It would have been something else. So it is political equation. Mm. Who meets the right political equation? And the political equation here is to cut the deputy president to size. Mm -hmm. So which one will inflict the most lethal or painful wound? That will be the qualifying. It's not about competence. If it is competence, I can tell you, uh, Senator Matula Kilonzo is very good. Mm -hmm. I would uh, go for him first. That, that may not be. Secondly, if uh, he was to be given to Senator um, Matula Kilonzo, we'll be talking about a vulture system, a tooth system. Mm -hmm. Because he's not uh, in Jubilee. And this is a technically a place for Jubilee. Uh -huh. So they'll be going to eat the carcass as Jubilees die. Mm -hmm. So all that will depend who does the president like most. Who will inflict the most painful lethal wound to the deputy president. Of the various Senate committees. Change number one. Devolution committee we shall replace Senator Kenya with Senator Murkomen. Senator Kenywa will cease being the chairman of the Revolution Committee. Senator Linturi will cease from being a member of PAC and also a vice chair of LIGO. Dr. Langat will also cease from being the chairman of Education Committee. And also Senator Cheral K will cease from being the chairman. Now when you hear the names of asked senators like Kenya, Linturi and Cheragei, who are all vocal supporters of the deputy president, then it's clearly a move to rid the committees of the influence of the DP. Not the influence. Those people still are, uh, they are there still in the Senate. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first round of victory does not mean it is the end. What the biggest impact is normally the money associated with the um, being in the chair. Mm -hmm. Being a chair of a committee is almost as, as powerful as being a CS. Uh -huh. in terms of money, in terms of resources, in terms of uh, privileges. So what is being taken more is not the DP, 
but you are being said you are losing these privileges so that you feel the pain. And I had the name of um, uh, uh, Senator Murkomen. Mm -hmm. I think I think that is a big insult to the, the devolution committee, uh, even to the to to to, to Murkomen. Mm -hmm. The fellow who uh, is being removed <laughs> is one of the few who said no. We are not uh, we are not voting him out. We are not removing him. Mm -hmm. So to take over from him will be just to see who can be betrayed left, right, and centre. I think um, it is a very sad state of affairs. But anyway, uh, the future is bright for everybody. Now, the big question uh, is where this is headed next. Is the head of majority leader in the National Assembly, Eden Dwale, the next on the chopping board? There are two scenarios. Mm -hmm. One, maybe he may be put in such a state of fear that if he remains, he will play ball. Mm -hmm. Or he may be completely removed and a new face brought up. So those two are on the table. Either to inflict so much fear on him. You know when you have a brush with the death, yeah. then you come and say, Hallelujah, God, I don't want man and me. Mm -hmm. Or to be removed. I think there was to reorganize also the, the, the National Assembly mm -hmm. uh, for preparation for the constitutional review bills. And uh, possibly an attempt will be made to impeach the deputy president. The propaganda war is in top gear. There was a fake order paper indicating that an MP would bring an impeachment motion against the DP when the National Assembly resumes its sittings on Tuesday next week. Ready for impeachment of the deputy president William Ruto. And I'm just wondering, and I want to ask our Bukalini. Ruto was fired by Uru Kijeta a long time ago. Why are you firing? So this impeachment talk against the DP has been in the air for some time, even though it is said that the president doesn't favor such action. Is it a genuine option or just part of the propaganda in the succession war? If, 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 if let's say, people could talk to God and ask Jehovah, Jehovah can you, of all the people to be recalled in, in Kenya, who do we want to recall first? I think there would be quite a few people who would say, recall DP, call him home, because it will be a big solution, Kabisa. So his removal from that office uh, it seems to be top on some people's agenda. Uh -huh. And therefore, if it was easy, he would have gone home yesterday. Uh, this is more because it is also the way of uh, the deputy president or the vice president mm -hmm. of Kenya, especially the ones who have been fairly successful. Uh, if you look at the, the history of President Moy, you will learn what he went through. In fact, the late... Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga, being the Luo that he was, could not take it. He just walked out and said, he wrote a letter and said, I'm leaving. Uh, Mwishimua Moi came in and said, me, I'm a humble Christian, uh, persevere up to the end. He read the verse, persevere up to the end. Yeah. So he persevered, he became president. Then uh, there was one, Josephat Karanja. When he was being removed, he was called kneel before me, um, vice president. At one time, President Moi went abroad, and then uh, just Fat Karanja <laughs> went around State House and saying, State House, where we? You will know me. <coughs> so, and he was calling politicians and telling them, please kneel down. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you, I saw just Fat Karanja, a, a former VC of Nairobi, Nairobi University, a fairly proud human being. Mm -hmm. He will not be the type who will drive around State House up there, and then he says, State House, where we? Mm -hmm. And then other people are seeing. He yeah, I think left, he was removed in an ignominious manner. He went into depression. And what kind of poisoning or contamination the food had? It is an act of sabotage, an attempt to sabotage the good work that the deputy president has been doing with members of parliament and our churches in this country. The William Ruto Foundation has been donating food in Nairobi and its environs for months now without any incident. It is clear those behind the distribution of the contaminated food are engaging in political thuggery for other reasons. And that's my producer Kevin Owino reading that tweet from the uh, William Ruto Foundation. So whether is this dirty political tricks or do you believe that the DP will <coughs> shoot himself in the foot and actually distribute toxic food? Now items? definitely let me tell my brother Nyoro. <coughs> he may not be more closer to President Uru than Kabogo was. I was in the team long before we became president. During mm -hmm. the Hague days, Kabogo was very close. He's the one who would speak and then he calls President Uru to speak. 
then he was not present. He used to carry a fly wix like that of Jaramu. Mm -hmm. And he used to try to speak like Jomo Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. When his time came, he went. <laughs> and they thought, why did why it also went? Please don't do things that will make your history bad. I love and respect <coughs> Brother Nyoro. He's good. Mm -hmm. Contaminated food. I thought the deputy president distributed raw food. So food that has, uh, they call it what? The food that has uh, whatever, whatever, mm. ordinarily be cooked food. Raw food, cabbages, whatever, whatever, it would not be that contaminated as they are talking. It's only that they want to paint him bad. Mm -hmm. And I suspect they will take some of the food, contaminate it, and they say our people have tested, and then to, to do this. Remember, we are talking about life of people. This may have painted the president badly. I think it was a miscalculation for the deputy president to go and distribute food in the president's home. What it was saying is that you are busy fighting people in the Senate and your own people need relief. Now that <laughs> insult will not be left unattended. That's what they are trying to do. But let them stop for now. Let's deal with it after COVID. We are uh -huh. now in a crisis emergency. Thank you very much. Uh, Ambrose Weda, our regular analyst, uh, advocate of the High Court, sits on the board of Lake Basin Development Authority, canon of the Anglican Church, and as he recently told us, he's also a soft skills expert.